Hey guys, Shaw here, and today we are storming the beach of Stormheim in Soleil's Gambit, tackling World of Warcraft's most notorious villain, the Murlocs. As someone who mained a Murloc Shaman in Hearthstone, I think my expertise here should really shine. Who the fuck wrote this script? It's no secret that Soleil's Gambit and Streets of Wonder have been extremely difficult based on several factors, but I think the largest contributor to the failure rate of a lot of groups is generally just a lack of knowledge. Not to mention the boss health this week being somewhere like double what last week was during Season 2. So today I just wanted to talk about how to control some of the more annoying aspects of the Murloc mobs. Specifically we're going to take a look at the Murloc Scalebinder. We're going to talk about abilities and mechanics, the best type of counterplay, and of course, routing. So let's dive in. The Murloc Scalebinder is probably one of the most annoying trash mobs in any of the Shadowlands dungeons, especially when ignored. They can provide an extraordinary amount of survivability to whichever group they are tethered to, and will most likely always be the focus target. Their signature ability is called Invigorating Fish Stick, which is uninterruptible cast which is baseline at a 1.2 second cast time. This ability creates a totem to protect all nearby murlocs, decreasing damage taken by 25% and healing 5.5k damage every 3 seconds. Now keep in mind that this is going to obviously scale with key level, and Depending on the new seasonal affix, if there are currently relics up, the cast time will be faster because they will be affected by the Vi relic, giving them increased haste. So you're looking at a closer to like 0.9 second cast time, so you gotta be quick. If one of these totems happens to spawn, it's on everyone in the group to single target focus these down because it is unaffected by cleave and AoE. Though, it is important to note that it can be cleaved off of. Your group should treat this like an explosive a very annoying high health explosive that heals and protects all nearby enemies. The Scalebinder will cast this roughly 10 seconds into combat upon pulling, depending on the way that you pull, and has an internal cooldown of roughly 25 seconds. While it cannot be interrupted with kicks or counterspells, it can be CC'd with a plethora of different crowd control types, including, but not limited to, stuns, fears, disorients, blinds, polymorph, incapacitates, etc. Similar to Bucking Rampage in Mists of Sheerness Scythe or the Animate Weapons cast in Sanguine Depths, upon the start of this cast, the internal cooldown is triggered, meaning that the Scalebinder cannot recast immediately upon leaving the crowd-controlled state. This is great news because it means that there is a counterplay. So how do we deal with it? As a pug, I would always try to limit your pulls to just one Scalebinder, so you have complete control over the mob's casts. Obviously, in well-coordinated groups, you can have assignments, which allows you to pull more groups together. There are a ton of options to lock down these mobs, but as a Guardian Druid specifically, we have Incapacitating Roar, Mighty Bash, and Typhoon. Tauren Druids is, like even more specifically have Warstone, but keep in mind this is capped at the five nearest targets. All DPS should be focusing this mob immediately and rotating their crowd control effects to keep it locked down when it attempts to cash fish stick. Outside of that, there mu isn't much to it, so let's go over some routing ideas for this new dungeon. I'm going to talk about my own routing ideas, as well as look at Dratnos's route, because I know a lot of players use that and fall back on it. So, let's take a look at that. Alright, this part of the video is going to be a little bit more unscripted, but this is Dratnos's route that I have imported, Season 3 SG by Dratnos. I will leave a link to this Raider.io site uh, link in the description below, so if you don't know where Dratnos's routes are, you can find them there. Going forward in the future with my routes, they will be in my Discord, which you'll always find in the description below. My routes currently aren't updated because my group is still experimenting. They're going to differ a lot from Dratnos's route because my routes are going to be more based around like you're in a coordinated group in Discord or in some kind of voice communication and coordinating things. Dratnos, though, his route's always great. He is the daddy of WoW. Love him big, big time very much. So let's jump into some of the polls that are going to have scale binders in it and a um and how to deal with it this is probably gonna be the standard pug strat right so you're gonna kind of just go along the shoreline it's very very easy there's only a few things you need to look out for which are going to be these giant goliaths now they do patrol as you'll see they aren't positioned here i don't think nagi has um updated yet there's obviously in typical dungeon routes you'll see the patrol route but they're not here so some of these smaller packs they do little loops here the these guys loop here and these dudes come up and down in this area and then of course these guys also pat back and forth so you have to be careful of that so 
in Dreadnought's route, it does have all these pulls separated. Now you are you can feel free to pull more than just what is circled. But again, like I've said before, you want to keep in mind how many scale binders are in each pull because the more that they are, the more your group is going to have to focus on making sure those die. In Dranos's route, his third pull in here has one scale binder in it. I would recommend if you would like, especially because it's at the very, very start of the dungeon, you'll probably end up doubling this up. You'll probably pull these two packs together and there's still only going to be one scale binder because there is nothing present. There's no scale binder present in the first pull. This patrol is also going to be running around. You, I think right when you start the key, they will be right here. So you can get a good, nice triple pull, pop cooldowns. You can pop Lust on Fortified Weeks if you'd like. In this route, it has the Goliath. I don't know if they change percent because when you get it from Raider IO, it does say that it's a 100.9 like route. But now it's saying it's a 105. So you can just drop this guy and it's a, it's 100.6, which is good. But your DPS have to be extremely quick at getting these down because this guy pats right up to the water where this uh, second node is and he sits down. So you either want to pull all of these over here or you can just pull this guy in and maybe drop a pack later in the dungeon. But we're not going to get into that because this will turn to a 30 minute video fairly easily with that. So the next pull, there will be a, another scale binder as well. I can definitely imagine well-coordinated groups could probably even get a quadruple pull here if they really like, because you only have two scale binders you have to deal with. Pull number six, or I guess in this route, pull number five has just one more scale binder in it as well. And then pull number seven is going to have two scale binders. So this is probably going to be the scariest pull. On top of that, there are also two, or this is going to be a relic pull, which means like I mentioned before with the Vi relic, this is going to give... It enhances the nearby allies with 15% haste. So this means that all of the Murlocs in this pull or other mobs you decide to pull in if you want to pull in a Goliath or if you somehow pull in the dudes from the first hallway, they will attack and do things and cast and whatnot 15% faster, of course. So it's something you want to keep in mind that you have to be even more on top of making sure you get your CSCs out because you have pretty much like less than a global to react. You want to make sure everyone's on top of them. This is still a pretty good pull to grab certain relics, but again, this is the only probably scary pull with double scale binder. And then this last pull over here, I think has one scale binder. But the problem is that because you're kind of tucked in this corner and this patrol mob is walking and these patrols are walking, you have to be extremely careful that when they start to run away, you're keeping them still. So things like Ursal's Vortex, things like Binding Shot, uh, Nox, Grips, Roots, whatever you can to prevent them from running away and getting them down when they're low. But again, scale binder will always be the priority. So jumping over to a new route, my group has been doing some theory crafting with potentially messing or doing less mobs later in the dungeon. While the Murlocs can be annoying, if you have them under control with Scalebinder and you have ways to prevent mobs from running away, so things like Binding Shot, things like Ursal's Vortex, those type of abilities can keep mobs locked down tight and when they're running away, they won't pull any extra trash. So you could probably get more trash in this dungeon. Now, if your group really wanted to, I can see a world where you can actually go up along the cliffside as well. And this will prevent you from having the, having the opportunity to pull these Goliaths on accent because they are worth a lot of percent. And while they are worth a lot of percent and might be valuable in some group scenarios, they are um, sometimes on Fortified Weeks probably not worth the time investment and create a lot more of chaos in certain pulls. You can avoid that by pulling up and through here. And then there's, if you're doing that, there's a few other, a few pulls you need to keep in mind. This first pull with relics right out, right out of the gate, right out of the graveyard. This pull does not have a skill binder in it, so it's safe. You can also tag in this patrol. It's going to come in fairly naturally. I think it does a circle around this area. They just keep running in circles. It's probably every 30 seconds or so you'll see them run by. And then you can then pull this if you'd like. Again, there is one skill binder here. But what's kind of nice about this is you can also grab these Murlocs as well. There is another scale binder, but it's very similar to this pull here where there's two scale binders, but you're getting more efficient percent and you're going to get relics. So danger again with relics. If there's Vi, they're going to cast a little bit faster. So you want to make sure you're either killing the relics or just you're on top of your stuns. You can pull them off to the edge of the water and you won't pull this Goliath. But again, this is totally like this is more of, I would say, a higher level group might be doing this. Again, I don't know, though. It's still early in the season. My group is still experimenting which one's going to be more efficient for us. But this is just if you didn't want to just go along the shoreline because you find it annoying, you can always go up through here. You get extra relics and you you ignore some of these more atrocious uh, patrol. Again, then the next pull after that, you, you'll see one scale binder. You can also grab this patrol that's going to come back and forth. And then same thing here, you can pull this group. There's just one scale binder and you're pretty much set. 
Now, I think before you leave this area, you need somewhere in the range of, I think, 40%. I'd have to double check that. I'm not going to for this video. Um, actually, you know what? Fuck it. I'll look at Dretnos' route. So when he's leaving this area, he also has, he has 35.8. So that would make sense, right? If he has 35.8, it's still 100% route. So, so this is 35.2. If we assume that the rest of the route is normal and you pull everything, it should mean that this is, this is not going to be an accurate route. I'm just like clicking on it. You're not going to pull all these together. Do not follow this. Maybe we'll make this room a little bit better. So this route here would be exactly 100%. So you're saving that 0.6. It's not a big deal, but it's something you can do if you'd like. So let's go back for the first room. So again, the reason that we're thinking that this might be the play is the only thing, instead of trying to ignore two Goliaths, you only have to ignore one or get around one. You get an extra set of relics if you'd like. Um, you can even pull more trash around here if you find that some of these pulls are a little bit easier. Um, like this pull doesn't have a scale binder and it does all at all. Neither does this one. And then if you kill this pack here, you can get the woe relic and just skip all the way to boss if you'd really like to. So that would be the benefit of doing something like this, pulling um, along the cliffside is the, just the extra relics. So I hope that helps in your endeavors. I've seen a lot of groups having a lot of trouble with Tazavesh. I've seen and heard of a lot of my guildmates who have pugged into this dungeon and have just spent more than half the key just in this area of the beach, which can obviously be really frustrating. And I think that there's a handful of players out there who just don't understand the mechanic of each of the murlocs. Some of the other murlocs have some things you need to look out for, but nothing as annoying and chaotic as the fish sticks. Again, if you'd like my routes, which will probably be posted this weekend at some point, you can find those in my Discord server, which will be linked below. I'll also have the Wowhead links, and you can follow me on Twitch. I'm going to be streaming very soon. I'm trying to figure out a schedule for it, but it's mostly going to revolve around when my key group plans on pushing. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you're staying happy, healthy, and I will catch you all in the next one. Take care.